Hi, today we'll be doing uh, code in Java. Uh, it'll be the continuation of our data structures uh, series. So we'll be doing uh, heaps today, so we'll learn about heaps. Uh, we're going to be doing, in this one, it's going to be a linked heap, I guess, and in the next video we'll do the array heap. So let me start by getting rid of this stuff. Uh, this one we can close, so we'll we'll create it. We'll start with the interface actually. So we'll create a class called heap ADT. So I'm using IntelliJ again. I'll just call this heap ADT. Dot JAVA. Actually, it should have been interface, but that's okay. So we'll be using generics again today. Uh, so we'll start with this class uh, or this interface. We'll just start with some doc here. I don't think it really. Actually, we'll define it first, and we'll go up there in a sec. We'll say public interface heap ADT of type T extends binary tree ADT of type T. And we'll go up here and put some Java docs. So we'll say uh, heap ADT defines the interface to a heap. So we can use this for the array heap and the linked heap. So here we'll say, uh, we'll do the doc for the add method. So we'll say adds the specified, specified object to this heap to this heap we'll say at param obj the element to be added to the heap so after that we will uh Uh, we'll, uh, so we'll write the method, so we'll do public void, it returns void, so we'll say public void uh, add element, takes a tobj <clears throat> as a parameter. So it's going to be roughly the same, we could say t element here, I think I will switch it to element, just because uh, we're going we're gonna to use this keyword, I'm going to try to change it to that. So here we'll say, uh, if, we, if we need to change it, we'll come back. So we'll do the removes method here. So we'll say removes element with the lowest value from this heap. We'll say at returns, because it returns uh, returns type T. So we didn't need to put a, a return tag here below here, because this uh, returns void, so we don't need to do that. So here we'll say at return the element with the lowest value from the heap. So we'll say public t remove min. And then we'll just this interface only has three methods. Add element, remove min. And find min. So the min in the so that we're doing a we're doing a min heap, I believe. So the lowest value will be in the root, and its children, both of its children or each of its children, will be less than or equal to the root of uh, the, the 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 parent root, the parent root or the parent node. So here we'll say uh, returns. Return, for find min, we'll say returns, basically just returns the root. You could say that if you really want to, but you, here we'll say returns the reference to the element with the lowest value in this heap. We'll say add return a reference to the element with the lowest 
fell you in the heap. So we just have a few more data structures. So we have this, so the linked and the, the array implementation. Then we have a small practice code priority heap or priority queue, which uses heaps, I believe. Uh, then we'll have graphs. We'll do uh, a graph ADT, so that's just kind of like a network. So I don't, I don't know, it's not a network, but we're gonna do a graph. We might do the network. If we have time, we'll, we'll do at least one of them. Graph for the network, because network's pretty much the same thing, just has a distance between the two points. Uh, then we'll do our hash code, which is just an, which is just an array. It's uh, what is it? It's a double. What's it called? Double array? No, two-dimensional array. That's right. So it's a two-dimensional array. So it's just a different concept. It stores a key. You retrieve it. So we'll just we just got three more basically. So uh, we'll continue with that. And after that, we'll be moving on to Android stuff and XML. So here we'll say uh, returns a reference to the element with the lowest value in this heap. Then we'll say add return a reference to the element with the lowest value in the heap. And here we'll say public t find min. And that's it. Just have three methods and that's all. So there is UML for this. Uh, I don't I don't think I'll include it. It just uh, has a UML diagram. UML is the unified modeling language. You can use it in <clears throat> in C too, I think. <clears throat> C plus plus. I don't know if you can use it in. C, I think it's C plus plus, the object oriented one. Yeah, you probably could use it in C and C sharp as well. But it's usually for object oriented languages, I think. So we'll do uh, so heaps. We'll, we're just we're not going to be doing any diagrams, I think unless we really need to. We'll just try to do some small diagrams in the code. Uh, so let me just uh, find my class here. Uh, linked. Should be linked uh, Q, no sorry, linked heap. So we are going to actually we're going to need a new heap node class so we can't use our binary tree node because it requires a parent node which we don't ha we didn't have before unless you really wanted to change that one but we're just going to create a fresh one so we'll, I'm going to right click my src folder uh, then I'll, I'm going to you, I don't think it shows this for some reason that's that's weird so we'll say a heap node dot j a v a that's it using generic so public class heap node public class uh, heap node let's close this a little bit we'll say public class heap node of generic or of type t and we'll say extends oh so it does extend that binary tree node so if you don't know what those are uh, again go back and watch all the videos starting at the start of this series and then you'll have all the classes for that. And we're gonna, it, uh, I go over all that stuff, what they are, and how to implement it, and all that. So before we do that, we'll just write some doc here. So we'll say heap node represents a binary tree node with a parent pointer for use in heaps. That's it. So our heap node is just going to have uh, one field. It's going to have a protected heap node of type T named parent. Here we'll have some doc for the constructor. So it creates a new heap node with uh, specified data. We'll say at param uh, element the data to be contained within the new heap node we 
We'll say power key node takes a T element. Then we'll say this dot. Oh, whoops. I guess we don't need a this. Do we need a this? That's okay, yeah, so we will need a th this. Where's our element, to be honest? Or oh, elements coming from uh, he the uh, binary tree node, right? So I'm just gonna uh, take a little sip of my water here, one sec. I'll create it's empty. So here we'll just say uh, this. Actually, instead of this, we'll say uh, super. We'll pass in uh, element. So that's just uh, calling the super constructor in binary tree node. We're passing in the super, uh, we're, sorry, we're making a call to the super reference and passing the element in the parameter to that constructor. And here we'll set parent to point to null. So after that, we will do the uh, get parent method. So we have our public heap node, T elements, uh, super element, parent points, and null. Just move that bracket up there. So here we'll say uh, in some doc returns, or just return the, or I could say returns the parent of this node. Return the parent of the node. So we'll say public heap node of type T get parent. And we'll just say return parent. That's it. Nothing too complicated about those. And then we'll do a set element. So we'll say sets the element stored at this node at param the element to be stored. Public void set element uh, takes a T element. So let me see this dot element points to element. Uh, should say elements coming from that a comma should be a period. Okay, so this uh, should be coming from binary tree node. So the SE, I don't know if you can see that, but it says it's coming from binary tree node of type T protected T element. And if you can't see that, uh, if you're using IntelliJ, just hover over with your mouse over element and you can see that it, the class that it comes from highlighted in yellow. Well, I don't know if it's going to be highlighted in yellow, but if you're using high contrast, it'll highlight in yellow. It'll say it comes from binary tree node of type T. And below it in white, it'll say protected T element. So below that, we'll have a set parent as well. So we had get parent set element set parent. We're missing one here, aren't we? Get element would be nice. Or do we already have one? Maybe that's why, because we already have one. And we're overriding the set element, perhaps. Is this override? Uh, let's see here. Overrides method set element in binary tree node. That's what I thought, so it is an override. Okay, so that's why we're not going to include get element, because we don't need to override it. It just does this exact same thing. Uh, 
So here we'll have the uh, sets the parent of this node at param node the parent of the node. We'll say public void set parent takes a heap node of type t named node. And here we'll say parent points a node. So we're just setting the parent. Uh, the parent is of type heap node of type t. So here we're saying, okay, well, it's going to take a heap node of type t as parameter. And we're going to set parent so that we can set parent pointing to this node. We could have also called this parent as well and use of this keyword, but it doesn't really matter what you do. It's the same thing. So now we'll do the linked heap class. So it's not too bad. There's it's not a massive class. There's a few. Actually, well, there is a quite a few methods. It might take two parts to do it. We're gonna try to do it all right now. Uh, so we'll go with uh, with the add. Actually, we have to create the class first. So we'll start with a new class. So I'm going right to right-click my SRC folder again. We'll call it linked heap dot java. So we'll say public class linked heap of type T and we're going to say extends linked binary tree. So it ex notice how it extends linked binary tree and not linked binary search tree. So it has direct access to this tree. And we'll say implements heap ADT of type T. So here we'll say linked heap implements a heap. I really need to get a straw for my videos, for my uh, my glass, because I don't want to have to uh, move the microphone and take a sip every time. So we'll say uh, linked heap implements a heap. Guess one of those curly straws will come in handy. So here we'll say a linked heap implements a heap. Yeah, because my videos are quite long, like these ones. Probably be a few hours each, so obviously you're going to want some kind of drink or something during the video. Maybe even a snack, but I don't really eat during my videos. So we'll say a linked heap implements a heap. It takes parameter of type T. Uh, that was automatic, I didn't write that. So then we'll just start doing the, the the fields here. So we'll say public heap node of type T. We'll call it last node because we're going to keep a, not last name, last node. We're going to keep a reference to the last node. So in a heap, the elements move like, uh, I guess I can't draw here, but I'll do it down here. So we'll have like five, right? Then what do we have six? So which is the last node here? Well, it's this one because it, the nodes go like this. It goes from left to right when we add. So, so at this point we're going to be like, okay, we're going to add here because that's the empty spot. Then now we're going to add. Well, we're going to add on the next line because there's no space, and we're not going to add to this one. We're not going to add to eleven first. We're gonna add to six first because it goes from left to right. So a heap uh, is a is a complete binary tree, meaning that it's balanced. I think that the the definition in my textbook was slightly off. So it says a complete bind like like uh, uh, the heap node. Sorry, the heap 
itself, like the heap tree, the linked heap tree. So a, a heap is a complete is a complete binary tree. So complete is related to the balance of a tree. Well, what is what is the balance of a tree? Uh, or like when is a tree balanced? So a tree is balanced when all of the leaves of the tree are on the same level or within one level of each other. And the height of the tree is log of base n times m, where m is the number of nodes in the tree and n is the order, such as binary. So if it's n re, it would be 2. So n would be 2 if it's a binary tree, which this is. So then a complete tree is related to the balance of the tree. A tree is considered complete if it is balanced and all of the leaves on the tree are at the bottom level or on the left side of the tree. So that, that definition's a little, it's, it's, it's off, because it's, that states that all the leaves will always be on the, to the left, so from the middle to the left, basically the, the middle counts as the left. But that's false. It's gonna be, it, what it, what it, what it really is, is that all the leaves of the tree will always be on the left, or in order. So actually I have a, an exact perfect definition here, which matches what I'm trying to say. Uh, where do I have that? Complete tree. So a complete binary tree is a binary tree. So a complete binary tree is a binary tree that is complete. So a complete binary tree is a binary tree is a complete binary tree. If all the leaves are completely filled except possibly the last level and the last level has all of the nodes as left as possible. So that's what it means. All the nodes are going to be as left as possible. So that's complete because that's left as possible. That's uh, that's that's complete because it's left as possible. And we'll say, okay, well, that's complete because it's left as possible. But if we go like this, well, that's not complete because there's space here, right, where we can add an element. Then we'll say, okay, well, there's space here where we can also add another element. Now that's complete. You know what? I'm not sure. The definition's hard to understand, especially the one from my textbook. But if I was to go like, okay, well, we'll add an element here. That's not complete because it's not on the left as possible. It always has to be left as possible. That's all, that's all it really means. So if this was here, whoops, that's not going to work. So if this was here, that's complete. But if this was here, that's not complete. If it was here, not complete. 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 It has to be as left as possible. So that's complete. That's complete. That's complete. It can't just be, it has to always be to the right, so that's that's a complete tree. That's a complete tree. That's not a complete tree because there's a gap there. So I hope you understand that. If not, I just Google it. You'd find a better definition than the one I have, probably. Or you'll find the one that I found. And I mean, the, the book definition I have is terrible. It wasn't as accurate. So hopefully you understand that. So that's what the last node is. It's the last node where it where it should be, where the uh, where it should be in its right position. So if if the tree was, I don't not sure if I went over this, but if that's the tree, last node is six. That's the tree. Last node is eleven. Last node is now six because eleven's gone. Last node is now five because there's no other node. So if we have this. Last note is 13, we have this. Last note is 15, we have this. That's that's not a complete tree, but the last note would be 21. If we have this, that's a complete tree and the last note is 12. 12 is gone, last note is 15. 15 is gone, last note is 13. 13 is gone, last note is 11. So I hope you understand that, so we'll move on. So I have the constructor here, public linked heap. 
And we'll we'll uh we'll pass we'll call the super reference again. Excuse me. So this one has a super reference because it extends binary tree node, and this extends blink binary tree, so it has a super reference as well. So after all that. We will, uh, actually, I'll just take a sip of water here. Apologize. Need to get a straw. I've been listening to those alpha waves, those like binaural beats. They like help you retain uh, information. Be careful with those though, because they can give you a headache if you listen to them too long, and if you're not used to it. Like the gamma ones can like can like give you anxiety. Like I don't have anxiety, but they, it can give you anxiety because it like takes the frequencies in your brain and like turns it on max, so it helps you retain information. But I'd be careful with that. I try the alpha ones; those are like the least strongest ones, I think. Those are like safe ones. I, I try for like 15 minutes and see if it makes you more innovative. But I usually just turn them on when I'm making videos or studying. So here we'll do uh, we'll do the add element method. So we'll say adds the specified add the specified element. To this heap in the appropriate position according to its key value. Uh, is this thing too big? A little bit. Yeah, okay, that's good. So we'll say uh, adds a specified element to this heap in the pro. Is it in 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 the appropriate position? Okay, so adds a specified element to this heap in the appropriate position according to its key value. Or it's like natural ordering, whatever you want. Then here we'll say at param, uh, could say element. Could say obj. Uh, we'll already have it written in obj, so we could, we'll just say obj. So obj the element to be added to the heap. Actually, we could do element, why not? Let's just try it. Hopefully I don't get any errors because I already have this written out. So we'll say yes, yeah, so we'll do that. You can do obj if you want. Node, whatever you feel comfortable with. So we'll say heap node of type t. We'll call it node points. So here, we're, so we're going to add an element. So what are we going to do? We're going to instantiate a node like a linked linear node, a tree, uh, what do you call it, binary tree node. But this time we're going to do a heap node because it's a heap. So we'll call heap node of type T, we'll call it node, we'll point it to new heap node of type T, we'll pass in element. Actually, well, we didn't even do the uh, method header here, so we'll do, what's that above? Here, so we'll do public void add element uh, t element. So here we'll pass an element. Is that what we did before element? That's why I'm wondering why it has it written in obj. That's okay. So we'll do element. So heap node of type t node points a new heap node of type t. We'll pass an element here, and then we'll say if root equals to null. We'll say we'll root points a node then. Actually, let me just uh, format that a little better. We'll say, okay, well, if root points to null, if the root's null, if the heap is empty, we'll say, okay, well, root points to node. Where's root? Well, root's coming from link binary tree, which holds a binary tree node root. So we're getting 
we're kind of getting complex here. They're, they're looking in, we're, we're accessing different classes within classes. So we got multi levels of inheritance here. And there's an error up there. So don't worry, we'll try to walk through with the debugger. If not, you can. Won't be too hard. So if root points to null, root is equal to node. I won't say else. Cats meowing, I'm not sure why. Alright, so we'll say else. Uh, so if the root is not null, basically, so this is if the root is null, and we'll say, okay, well, if the root is not null, then we'll say, okay, well, heap node. Uh, we're going to need some more methods here, aren't we? Heap get next parent add. So we will say it, and then we'll go down and do it. I right, don't want to confuse you guys too much. So we'll just, we'll just go with this for now. We'll say, okay, we'll heap node of type T. Uh, no, actually, heap node. Yeah, heap node type T. We'll call it next parent. Points to get next. Whoops, next parent add. So I want to go down and write that method right now, or else it could get confusing. So we'll just step under this. We'll come back. We'll say here uh, returns the. The node that will be the parent of the new node. At return, the node that will be the parent of the new node. So it returns the node that will be the parent of the new node. So we're going to get a node to be the parent of the node that we're going to add. So uh, we'll, if you don't understand exactly, don't worry. Once you debug it, it'll make more sense. So here we'll just say uh, it's a private support method. So we'll say for a private heap node of type T. We'll call it get next parent add. Then here we'll say heap heap node of type T result points to last node. So we're referencing last note from up there, from our global variables. And then we'll say while result is not equal to root, and and result dot get parent dot get left is not equal to result. Result points to result dot get parent. If result does not equal to root, we'll say here if result dot get parent dot get right equals null. Result points to result dot get parent. Else, uh, a few more lines here. Result points to Casted heap node to result dot get parent dot get right. Uh, is that in the else? Yes, it is. Okay, so we'll say while result dot get left is not equal to null. Result points to casted heap node of type T. Result dot uh, get left. Then else while result dot uh, get left is not equal to null. Result points to heap node type T. Cast it to result dot uh, get left. 
then return result. So you might be confused. Uh, I haven't looked at this code in a while, so I kind of forgot why they do this. So we're starting with the top. We're, we're setting result to point to last node. So we're saying, okay, well, while result does not equal to root and result dot get parent dot get left is not equal to result. Result points to result dot get parent. So we can walk through this. Let's let it, let us just walk through this because it's going to be confusing I'm trying to think of it like this. So let's go back up to the, our add method because our add method is pretty easy. It's easier than this. So excuse me. Well, we do call that, but we'll just say okay. Well, next parent points you get next parent add. You will say if next parent dot get left points to null, we'll say next parent dot set left to node. Else next parent. Uh, else net. Uh, whoops. Else. Actually, nope. That was right the first time. So next parent dot set right to node. Then we'll say no dot set parent to next parent. After all that, we'll say last node points a node mod count plus 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 yeah mod count plus plus on an add and remove I believe. And here we'll say if size is greater than one, heapify add. So this implementation, it was stupid. They did a recursive size method when they could have just used a count. It's really, it's a really big waste of time to go through that size method. It takes literally hours if you have like 10 elements in your tree, or it can take tons of time to do that, or even more. If you're actually to write it out. So what a heap what does a heapify add do? Well we'll 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 do the method right now. So it's a small method. It's a support method, so uh, we'll put it down here somewhere. So I'll put it down here, so we'll say, okay, reorders this heap after adding a node. Then we'll say private void heap if I add. We'll, we'll create a t temp set to null right now, then we'll say heap node of type t. We'll call it next points to last node uh, last node then we'll say 10 points to next dot get element and we'll say while next does not equal to root And is that out of the loop? No, it's not. So, so well, and uh, comparable. So, cast is comparable to temp dot compare to next dot get parent the get element is less than zero I think there's a mistake here uh, with one of these brackets so that can get confusing sometimes
Actually, maybe not. Let's see. That's a huge line. It's a massive. Okay, so it's saying while well, next is not equal to root. And comparable cast it. So it's saying, okay, well, temp dot compared to next dot get parent dot get element is less than zero. Then we'll say uh, next dot set element. To next dot get parent dot get element. So we're using a lot of method chains here. So hopefully you're comfortable with that. If not, don't worry, it's not that hard. It's just saying, okay, we'll set the element to next dot get parent. And then once you get the parent, get the element. So that's all it's doing. I never knew how to do that, then all of a sudden I just started doing it like naturally. So that same thing should probably happen to you. So then here we'll say next points to next dot parent. Uh, so there's no errors there, so that should be fine. So then at the we're actually done here, so we'll say next dot set element. Element to temp. Save that. Uh, do we leave any code out? Nope, that's it. So that's the that's most of it. Then we just have the remove min and the remove max. Uh, remove min, get new last node, heapify remove, is there remove max? No, there's no remove max, there's remove min and find min. And I'm guessing I have those, some of those methods on another file somewhere. So remove uh, find min. We should just ret uh, return result. Uh, sorry, return root. I believe, but I can double check if that's actually true. So what should we do now? We could start by you know instantiating maybe some nodes, just to practice. Or maybe we could finish the the code and then do that after. What do you guys think? What should we do? Uh, maybe we'll just go with inst maybe just instantiating one object, just so we can test it out. So we'll say okay. We'll say okay. We're gonna create a linked heap of type integer because you really only hold integers I think you might be able to hold strings you can test that out but I think usually heaps are meant for integers so we'll say a linked heap of type integer we'll call it heap points to new linked heap of type integer and don't think it takes any parameters Nope, so we'll go for the add element. So we'll say, okay, well, we want to add an element to our data structure. So we'll add, uh, what do we call it here? Add element. Heap.add element will add a six. Actually, no, we'll add a five. Add element. Is that coming from linked heap? Okay, so we'll add an element. So we'll, uh, we'll save it in. First, we'll run it to see if it works, hopefully. Find min. Okay, right, we didn't do find min, so we'll just uh, comment that part out for now. And we will come back to that part. So uh, we'll just run it again to see if that works. Actually, no, what did I just do? Wasn't there someone else there? Or did I not? Nope, that's uh, going too far back. How do you 
redo here, something weird. Control Shift plus Z. Okay, I thought I I thought I commented this out already. So I'll save that and run it. Okay, so it seems to be working. We'll uh, put a breakpoint here and we'll start debugging. So if the root's null, usually the first one's pretty easy. So I'll say, okay, we have our heap object. We have our heap object stored at uh, it's stored at memory location 951. You can see that here. Heap stored at memory location 951. It's called it's a type of, of type linked heap. Excuse me. So it has a last node, a root, and a mod count. So last node, it has a root from the other classes, from its super classes, and has a mod count as well. So we will step into that method, add element. We're saying, okay, we're well, creating a node of type heap node. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna instantiate it. We're gonna instantiate a node here, a heap node, with an element five. So we'll go, okay, we're gonna super el we're gonna pass an element to the super reference. We'll step in, goes to the binary tree node class. Sets this dot element to point to the element. Left to null and right to null. So every heap node will have. Uh, so one concept to get here is that every heap node, since it extends a binary tree node, every heap node will have an element, a left and a right as well. But on top of that, it's going to have a parent. So that's one way to do it, or we could have just changed the original class. This way is a little bit more complex, so it's I guess it's good practice. So our heap node again has parent has a parent reference on top of everything else that it also contains from a binary tree node heap, or sorry, a binary a binary tree node. So a heap node has a parent reference, object reference variable, and it has everything that a binary tree node would have. So it, it has an element, it has it has a T element, a binary tree node left, which a binary tree node has its own element and a left and a right, which are null, especially if these are null. This is going to be null unless otherwise stated, and this binary tree node right will be null, but it, it would also have its own left and right and element. So every binary tree node has a T element, a uh, left and a right, of type binary tree node, of type T. And every heap node has a parent. So here we're, we're creating this heap node, and that heap node contains a binary, it has everything a binary tree node would have. It's going to have an element, binary tree node of type T left, and a binary tree node of type T right. So that's what that super is doing. It's it's setting up everything that its uh, parent or its super class has. So it's saying, okay, well we're going to get all that stuff, set up elements, set up left and right. Done. So just keep in mind that a binary tree, uh, sorry, a heap node has everything that a binary tree node would have since it extends that. It has all those has all those fields has all those global fields for each object. It's a little tricky to think about because it doesn't have everything side by side like this. It doesn't have like a parent under there. We just have to remember. So where were we? Uh, after that, that's done. So our node should be created. We have our node here. Of type heap node. That node has a parent. 
It has element and left and right. So it has everything in one. That's what I was trying to say. And the elements can be stored in its own location within the node itself. Because it's, it's an object within an object, that's why. So if root is equal to null, well, where's our root? Where can we find it? Probably this, because a by, same idea with the heap node, uh, no, not a heap node. Same idea with a linked heap. A linked heap extends linked binary tree, so it has, it is a linked binary tree, and it has everything that a linked binary tree would have, so you can have access to all that, and even if you don't want access to it, it it's going to have it anyways. So it has all that stuff, it's just think about these classes are combined now, basically that's all it is. So it has that root, uh, where is that root by the way? Uh, link binary tree, this one. So here it is. Here's our root, and in that in that binary tree node, so binary so there's a binary tree node root in a linked binary tree. So it has a binary tree node root in a linked binary tree. Well, what does that binary tree node have? That binary tree node has a T element, a left and a right of type binary tree node of type T. So if root so it's this heap node, sorry, this linked heap has access to the root. That's why we're directly accessing it. We don't need to create any objects to access it. You don't even need to use any dot operators or anything. So we'll just say, okay, well, if if uh, root is equal to null, well, is root equal to null? Right there, root is equal to null, it's saying. Then we'll say, okay, well, root points to the node. Root points to the node. And last node also points to the node, so that's uh, root is set to point to the node, and the last node is set to point to the node as well. So we're going to say, okay, well, where's our linked heap? This linked heap right up here just has one element in there. I don't know if you can see that, but clicking this arrow here, it says linked heap. Our linked heap data structure is stored at memory location 951. So we're saying, okay, in our linked heap, what do we have? Well, we have our last node, which is there. What else do we have? Well, it has it extends linked binary tree. So we'll go to our linked binary tree. It's going to have everything that this has. So it has a root right there. It has a mod count right there. So it has all that stuff in one now. It's That's what I'm thinking. That's, uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, think of it like one object to help, even though it's not. Think of it as one object to help you know that everything's there together now with one. Even though that it's, it's an inheritance hierarchy, it can help you uh, think like that. So it's saying, okay, well, we have a root set to the node here. It points to, to points to the node nine six two. That's this one. The node holds our element object. So our node is stored in memory location nine six two, and it's saying, okay, well, the root of our tree points to memory location nine six two. So we're gonna set. We're gonna say, okay, well, after we got a root set. We're going to take our last node, which is pointing to null, and we're going to say, okay, let's point that last node to our node as well. We'll step in. Oh, uh, it doesn't do anything. We're going to mod count plus plus. If size is greater than one, which is not. Oh, great! It's going to go through this recursive method. Heapify add, which that didn't get. That didn't get called. So as you can see here. We have our root pointing to 962 and our last node pointing to memory location 962. So that does one element. And if we were to add another one, we'd go through next parent add. And we'll come back and do that in a sec.